Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Bubbles with Bethany. I'm so happy that you could all join us. I'm going to keep letting people in here for just one second. Looks like some people are still sort of in limbo. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Bubbles with Bethany. I am so excited to have you guys here. This is actually a really special week because you get not one, but two securities lawyers to ask all of your super scary questions. Um, and maybe you can, you guys can test Nick so that the answers that I give you that you didn't like, you can test me and see if maybe he gives you a better answer <laughs> because that happens sometimes they're like, I don't like that answer. And so people ask it again, another way. But before we even get into that, first, let me introduce, I, I just said, Nick McGrew is a securities lawyer, but he also does real estate transactions and entertainment law. So is that a is that by virtue of the fact that you're up in LA, Nick, that you just you have to do the entertainment law? Kind of, yeah. I had some clients that I was doing purely business stuff for, and they happened to be in the entertainment industry, and then they kind of I kind of grew with them. So yeah, very nice. That is exciting. Well, and I just learned recently that we both went to Pepperdine at different times, um, and I know that a lot of people that come out of Pepperdine at least look at doing entertainment law. So. Um, but we are happy that you are doing SEC law for real estate syndicators because that is an area that I think holds a lot of people up from creating their wealth. And so I know I appreciate you. I'm sure they all appreciate you. And thank you so much for joining us on Bubbles. Cheers to you with our, our non-alcoholic bubbles that we have today. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for We're having me. We're both on the wagon right now. So everybody, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. One is there is not going to be an after party today. Um, so apologies for that, but we'll get back to that next week. Um, next week, we're going to be having Nico Henderson and, and Jackson Campbell. Um, you, I think a lot of you probably know them. And um, we are going to, I forgot what the other thing. Oh, wait, another wave. Hi, Manny. I didn't know that. Um, I, I forgot what the other announcement was. So Jade, you'll have to remind me what that was. Um, if I, I don't think there was anything else. That was a, yeah, Good. you covered it. For all the things. So yeah. yay me. Um, Nick, I, I want to jump right into it because uh, cool. I started doing Bubbles with Bethany with this idea that I, I want to be out there helping people create conscious wealth. And I want to help people build their empires by leveraging what I call OPE, other people's everything. So we always talk about other people's money, OPM, but really when you get down to it, you need to leverage other people's everything. And what that really means is that you have to define what's your lane. What are you amazing at? What lights you up? Both, not just one, but both, because as entrepreneurs, we can be good at a whole bunch of shit that we hate. So things that let you up and things you're good at. And so I call that defining your lane, but really that it comes down to what your unique superpower is. What is it that Nick brings into the world that just no one else can do quite like Nick? What is your unique superpower? Yeah, I'd say my unique superpower is, I'm going to say it's smiles and go deeper with that, but it's uh, bringing people comfort. And so when we're talking, especially if we're, if we're going to relate this to entrepreneurship and law, you know, a lot of people are scared about security stuff, which I think they should have a healthy amount of fear because that'll make them be compliant. Um, but they're scared about it and it is complex and nuanced. And so I, I'm good at, even outside of this, just making people feel comfortable and getting the guard down and making them relaxed. And so particularly when we're working in my business, uh, getting clients to feel comfortable and saying, okay, yeah, this is crazy. This is daunting. This is scary, but it's going to be okay. And I try to do it with a smile as well. I love that. And it is, it's really nice because I, I talk to so many entrepreneurs, investors, people who want to syndicate. First of all, that word throws a lot of people, right? Syndication. Mm -hmm. um, I remember Pace Morby asked me one time, he's like, couldn't we just say getting together with your friends to buy some <laughs> property? <laughs> you know, I'm sure you've heard him say the same thing. Like, why do we yeah. have to say syndication? Why are we trying to feel so self-important? But people, that's a scary word. And so I, it is a really great superpower for someone in your position to be able to to guide somebody along and say, look, this is kind of a scary beast. It is, but that's okay because I've got you. Mm -hmm. And that smile, I'm sure, makes people feel a lot more comfortable. Like, well, he does have <laughs> me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure people really appreciate that about you. And and what in that, if you, and I, I know I didn't tell you any follow-up questions. So what in that 
is the part that lights you up. So obviously you're good at it. I can see that you've, you've had some tremendous success in your career, but what about that lights you up? So as far as like the specific work, uh, as you know, like I said, we said, it's very nuanced, very complex and, you know, one small change. And this is the thing I, I hate and I'm sure you get a lot too, where clients like, oh yeah, we just changed this real quick. Not a big deal. And I'm like, no, that's <laughs> a huge deal now. We can fix it, but it's not this small little thing. So it's so complex. And I'm just somebody who likes like logic and like puzzles and that sort of stuff. So we're trying to figure out how can we, you know, do what the client needs and have them achieve their goals while maintaining uh, compliance. And so uh, kind of putting that puzzle together is a lot of fun. And then the fact that I, I get to do that and I get paid to do that. And then also I'm actually am helping people out and kind of, as you're talking about, you know, talking about creating, helping clients create wealth. That's like, very cool that, you know, even though I'm not the one necessarily, you know, collecting the rent or anything like that, I have a small role in them, you know, being able to spend more time with their kids or go on those vacations or do whatever, you know, the life that they're trying to build for themselves is, it's very rewarding to be able to uh, help them and assist them in that. Well, and that's okay. So that's a really good segue. Usually, usually my segue to this next question is a little clunky, but you just did it perfectly for me. So when you talk about helping people create wealth, I always say um, creating conscious wealth. And I know what that means for me. And I ask everybody I talk to what that even means to them, because I realize that that's one of those concepts, like I, I call it God words, everybody, God means something different to everybody. Right. And I think that's true of, of conscious wealth and probably a lot of other things as well. So what it does conscious wealth mean to you specifically? Conscious wealth, we're going to think in the general sense, it's um, I'm a little like people say I'm a little poofy, um, but I think um, one of my mentors said, you know, energy has money um, and you don't want to, even if it's money, we all think money, 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 we want more. And he was like, no, if that money has bad energy. You don't want that. So I'd say, you know, the conscious wealth is having an understanding of what type of energy you want your money and wealth to have, and then making sure that you're making it in a way that is has the energy that you want to reflect into the world. 